these two watches look the same. So why is one $7,000 and the other one 200 bucks? See, when I first saw the Tag Heuer 60th Anniversary Carrera, I thought, well, this is it. They've made the perfect watch. I've been waiting for this watch for years. I mean, I know the Daytona is the better known chronograph today, but back in the 60s, the Carrera was the GOAT. And the vintage 2447 is probably the most beautiful chronograph I'd ever seen. But that watch is 36 millimeters, a tad bit small by today's standards for a sports watch. So today we're gonna look at Tag Warrior's modern 39 millimeter rendition of the 2447. But as a bonus, we're also gonna look at this Timex Marlin chronograph. I mean, it's obvious where this watch gets its inspiration from, but at 200 bucks, does it give you the same vibes for a fraction of the price? Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. We made the Watch Crunch app so that real watch nerds can talk watches on a modern platform where we can share this hobby with each other in a civilized digital town square, found both on Android and iOS. Is it me or did Tag Heuer wake up in the past few years and finally realize that their brand value is in the roots, their racing roots? Heuer, amongst some collaborators, were the first to develop a automatic chronograph movement in the Caliber 11 in 1969. And ever since Steve McQueen took the Monaco Racing in the movie Le Mans, Heuer has been synonymous with the racing chronograph. They struggled in the ensuing decades due to the pressures of the course crisis and the takeover by Technique Avant-Garde or TAG, but it seems that Jean-Claude Bevere right at the ship a few years ago. For a while now, they've listened to us in the enthusiast community chanting, less tag, more Hoyer. So in this case, by doing almost nothing more than just upsizing the vintage Panda Carrera, they've made perhaps the most beautiful watch in a perfect size. This is one of those watches that looks better in person than even in the studio shots. The first thing that strikes you is the pearlescent dial with a radio sunburst pattern that just melts the light and reflects it back to you in the form of butter. The tri-register layout is perfectly spaced and a black chrono hand provides high contrast. There is a touch of Fotina on the hour and minute hands, as well as on loom plots that surround the dial as a nod to history. And notice the dial doesn't say tag anywhere, just Carrera in that original insignia. See, less tag, more Hoyer. The Carrera's case is fully polished, but it doesn't feel too shiny because it's got just a thin bezel and no flourishes like crown guards or anything. A tall domed sapphire mimics the vintage plexiglass but does put the watch at just over 14 millimeters high. But the case does hide this height pretty well. The lugs is one of my favorite parts here. Lugs are often like a utilitarian afterthought on watches, put there simply as a strap holding appendage. But much like the Omega Liar lugs, these tall faceted Carrera lugs is one of this watch's calling cards. Turning the watch over, we get a look at the stellar Caliber Hoyer 02. And as far as mass produced chronograph movements go, this is of the highest caliber. Behind the skeletonized black rotor sits a column wheel chronograph. This makes the engagement mechanism consistent without a jumping of the chrono hand when you start and stop. It also has a vertical clutch system, meaning that you can run this thing all day with minimal wear to the mechanism. And the whole thing runs at four hertz and has a stout 80 hours of power reserve. Yes, this watch is limited to 600 pieces. It's now sold out. You'd have to buy it on the secondhand market. And yes, it was priced at over $7,000, but think about it. A nice vintage 2447 will set you back three times that. And you can argue the new version would suit a lot more risks. So I found this one lightly used from my friend Ticking Time Ohm. He's a watch dealer that always seems to have these jewel worthy watches in his collection for sale. Very reasonable prices. He's a great guy, supporter of the channel. So go check out his page for his latest finds. But what if you want to spend less? I mean, a lot less for the same look. Let's turn our attention now to the new $200 Timex Marlin chronograph. Timex has been on a roll lately. I mean, I don't like to cover the same watch brand too frequently for my own sanity, but Timex is making my job really hard. This Marlin chronograph from three feet away looks every bit as good as the tag, and that's not hyperbole. The dial takes after the striking sunburst finish of the Hoyer. There is detailing in the radial finishing of the subdials, and there are even additional flourishes like the three, nine, and 12 markers with the frame numeral done in like art deco font. We get a date at the 430 and a black minute track outboards. 
Other ways this David outshines Goliath is in its bracelet, meaning the Timex can be optioned with one, whereas you have to settle for a leather racing band for the tag. For the bracelet, you'd expect folded links at this price, but you'd be wrong. These links are solid as far as I can tell, ending with the inconspicuous folding clasp. Yes, the clasp is stamped steel and the links are pushpin for adjustment, but those are all excusable sacrifices at this price. The crystal is a highly domed plexiglass with some great off-angle distortions and the case is one mil wider than the Hoyer at 40, but one mil thinner at 13, making this watch sit even more squat on your wrist. No, I'm not trying to say that these two watches are competing at the same level because for many reasons, the tag is better finished, it has a higher grade movement, and the Timex runs a basic mega quartz. It's no column wheel chronograph. But I'm just thoroughly shocked at what Timex is pulling off at the sub $200 level. On the other side of the coin though, you can argue that the Timex design team lacks creativity because this watch heavily borrows its looks from the Hoyer. And this isn't the only example of plagiarism. Look at this Timex Kermit. Look at this Timex Seamaster 300. It sometimes just feels like Timex gave up and decided to copy other brands greatest hits. But in a world of homage watches and replicas, Timex is far from the worst offender. So let's get back to my original question, which is the 60th anniversary Tag Heuer Carrera feels like it's a square attempt at making perfection. A vintage grail for many, only upsized to a modern proportions with the stellar modern chronograph movement. It's ostensibly perfect. I cannot find any faults with this watch, but does watch perfection exist? I'm starting to think not. The perfect watch is like this ethereal idea that lives in your head. And once you kind of grasp at it, it slips through your fingers. Felt like it was trying really hard to be a modern 2447 with its Fotina, its vintage logo and its perfect proportions. But as undeniably beautiful as the watch is, I was left a bit in the uncanny valley, staring at a watch that was trying to pass the Turing test. So a truly revolting thought might be, do I like the $200 Timex better than the $7,000 Hoyer? Well, in some ways, yes. Because the Timex doesn't take itself too seriously. It's inspired by the Hoyer, but it has its own flair. And you can wear it carefree, knowing that you paid less than the tax that you would pay on a Tag Hoyer. No, the Timex is not perfect. Far from it. But it's not trying to be. And that's sort of the point. Now, if you want a perfect $200 dress watch to go with your Timex Chrono, check out this video of the new 38 millimeter Orient Bambino and some new colors are supposedly coming out this week. That would be a killer sub $500 two watch collection. 